I love going out in the forest to get cones. I feel they're really helpful in fire lighting, but I've always thought it must be possible to improve them. So today's video is about cones and how to improve them. And we certainly succeed. The results are spectacular. So, my pine cone collection. I tend to collect an awful lot when they're closed because I get more in my rucksack. Uh, when they open, they take about twice as much space. I've dried these or I've put these out in the sun for two or three days to dry. Uh, they're all Corsican, which is the most common in my local area. After two or three days or maybe one hot day, they're all open and ready for use. Really beautiful. And in the bin next to these is a load of beech sticks. We've had three gales recently and fallen be This isn't cones, I know, but it's just brilliant to go with the cones. Um, really hard, really dry, lovely, lovely kindling wood. And you can tell if it's dry by the noise. Listen to this. Now that, high note, really, really dry. Anyway, on to cones. Somebody asked me the other day what cones actually are. I said they're fruit. Like you get nuts on hazel bushes, cones are the fruit of conifers. Apples, fruit of apple trees. Some of the cones are really small, like these western hemlock, really small, no use for fire lighting, but really good for decoration. A little bit like these larch. You could use them in fires, I never have, but really, really good on a Christmas wreath or something. That's a European larch, and that's a Japanese larch, probably. Next we've got some spruce cones. A neighbour brought these round. I actually don't know what these are yet. They're like giant Sitka spruce, but the foliage was soft. These are actually Sitka spruce. Really, really common in many parts of Britain. Papery little things probably would work in the fire, and of course, with fire making, often you just have to work with what you've got. I've got plenty of these as well. This is Norway spruce. Huge cone, quite tough. I've used them in fires, but I've never tried to soup them up. I think as long as I've got pine, why would I bother? Just for the record, these are Douglas. You can always tell they've got like these little snake tongues coming out between the scales. This is Douglas fir. And now, pine. In the foreground, Scots pine. In the background, Corsican pine. There really isn't much a difference between them. Just Scots pine tend to be smaller and the Corsican tend to be a bit bigger and slightly more rounded look to them. When a neighbour heard that I was making this film, he bought three more for me. This is a Weymouth pine. I've never actually seen one of these, but would quite like a basket of them to play with. This is a beauty. This is what's commonly called radiata. I think that's Monterey pine. And then this one, really, really beefy is a stone pine. Obviously making a fire you'd only need one of these. Now for a bit of science. We've come in my shed to test the souped up cones. See which one burns best. I genuinely don't know. I've done different things in the past with pine cones but I've got the four basic things set out below. So let's have a look at them. Firstly, we've got a pine cone soaked in sunflower oil. That's old cooking oil. Next, I dripped candle wax all over this one. Poss yeah, possibly not enough, but... Next, this is a pine cone that I squeeze lots of spruce resin in. So natural spruce resin in that one. And lastly, my favourite, it's sort of twirled up with birch bark. Okay. You'll see that the 
cooking oil was quite difficult to light. More difficult than I thought, and I think perhaps I didn't make a very good job of the candle wax cone, because that too was difficult to light. And it really shouldn't have been. I'm also aware that my science is a bit poor here in that I should have had a control, I should have had a cone with nothing on it, but since I'm talking about souped up cones, perhaps I didn't need a control. The spruce resin was really slow to get going, and to start with I was quite disappointed with that. You see the candle wax not doing very well, and the birch bark as ever just spectacular. Fantastic stuff, really easy to catch, and a brilliant flame. So I don't think I was being fair on the candle wax, so relit that one. To start with, there wasn't much between them. The cooking oil was a bit of a failure, but the candle wax resin and birch bark were pretty good. However, after a while, it really was only the resin and bark that were still going and hot, hot enough to get a good top-down fire going. The other thing I noticed was that the scent from the spruce resin and the birch bark was beautiful. The cooking oil smell of chips and the candle wax didn't smell of, it, smell of anything. Anyway, I was so impressed with the experiment that I headed off out into a Christmas tree plantation to gather some resin because having found that in fact the birch bark and the resin were neck and neck what was pretty obvious is if I combined the birch bark for ease of lighting with the resin for longevity then I really really would have super cones. <clears throat> well, that was a really interesting day, I found it so. I've been doing this for many, many years, having living with wood fires, but today I really learned some stuff, and this, I think, is a real invention. My mother used to wrap sausages with bacon at Christmas and call it pigs in blankets, and I, I think we've sort of invented the pine cone in a blanket, and there's a bit of spruce resin pushed in there just to soup it up a bit. I've always loved using pine cones in fire making. Whoa. <laughs> but now I've learnt to make these, I'll be using these super cones all the time. Anyway, I hope you really enjoy living with wood fires, enjoy doing things like this, and have a good winter. <laughs>